welcome to Dibs on Blue. I'm Stephanie and this is my sign name. Today I want to show how to play Curators. Thank you to my patrons and to the publisher World Shapers for sponsoring this video. In this game, you're a museum curator and players compete to order staff around and create the best functioning museum. In order to do that, you have to create interesting visuals, pay off contracts, and get people to visit your museum. If you're successful, you may be the museum of the year. Whoever earns the most points wins the game. To set up, put the end game disc in the middle of the table. Randomly place the various museum wings around the end game disc in a spiral, like shown here. In a two player game, you need 17 wings, not labeled three plus or four. In a three player game, you need 21 wings, not labeled four. In a four player game, you need all of the wings. Set the auction house somewhere nearby. Place one object of each color on the bottom spots of the auction house and on the end game desk. The objects left over can be set nearby. Players choose the color they want to play and take the five corresponding worker chips of that color. The side face up should look like this, not this. Each player needs a museum entrance and $4,000. The other money tiles should be placed nearby in a general supply. One visitor token should be placed on the visitor track of the museum. The rest of the visitor tokens can be set nearby. Shuffle the normal or red contract cards and the complicated or black contract cards. Each player needs one of each and can look at them. Players should keep them a secret by placing them face down in front of themselves. The normal and the complicated contract cards should be placed as face down decks on the table. If you would like to play a more advanced game, you can choose one of the advanced cards to include, which adds new additional rules. Choose who goes first, or you can decide the first player by who most recently visited a museum. Now you're ready to play. On your turn, you must flip over one of your worker chips. Alternatively, you can choose to flip over two of your chips. By choosing to flip over a worker chip, you're choosing to do that worker's action. For example, if you wish to do the carpenter's action, you must flip over the carpenter's work chip. If you want to flip over two worker chips, they must be the same worker. For example, you can choose to flip over two carpenter work chips. Then you will do the carpenter's action twice. The carpenter allows you to pick one of the wing tiles from the spiral. However, you have to pay for it. The last wing is free, but choosing the next room tile will cost you $1,000. The next wing tile is 2,000. The next one is 3,000 and so on. The cost for the wing tiles increases by $1,000 as you get closer to the center of the spiral. After you've chosen and paid for a wing tile, you then place it in your museum by connecting the door to an existing door. This is acceptable, but this is not. 
You can rotate or flip over wing tiles as needed when placing. The other side of the tile is a mirror image of the wing. If you flip over two carpenter work chips, you can choose two wing tiles, but you must pay for them first before taking them. For example, if you want this wing and this wing, you must first pay $1,000, then $2,000. Then you can take both wings and connect them to your museum. If you choose the archaeologist action, flip over that worker chip and take one object in the color of your choice. Then store the object in your museum, as you can see here. You can store up to six objects in your museum. If you should ever have more than six objects, you must choose which to discard back to the general supply so you get back down to six. Then take one more object of the same color and place it in the auction house if there's room available. Objects should be placed from the bottom to the top. If you flip over two archaeologists, take two objects of two different colors. Flipping over the Collection Manager worker chip allows you to buy one or more objects of the same color from the auction house. The costs for the object rows are displayed on the auction house. For example, if you wish to buy these two blue objects, you must pay $1,000 and $2,000 for a total of $3,000. Once you pay, you can store the objects in your museum If you would like, you can pay an additional $3,000 for each object of the same color taken from the general supply. There is no buy limit here. You can just keep spending $3,000 for each object you take. Just remember your storage area in your museum has a limit of six. Flipping over two collection managers allows you to buy objects of two different colors. If you flip over the restorer worker chip, take one or more objects from your storage area to place in the rooms of your museum. Objects must be of the same color. If a wing becomes full of objects, take one visitor token and place it on your visitor track. If a placed visitor token covers the contracts icon, Draw one normal and one complicated contract card. Look at them and keep them a secret by placing them face down. Be aware that the objects you place in your wings cannot be removed or moved. There is a limit of nine visitors allowed on the visitor track. If you flip over two restore worker chips, take objects of two different colors from your storage area to place in different rooms. Flipping over the finance manager allows you to earn $1,000 for each visitor on your visitor track. If you flip over two finance managers, you can earn $2,000 for each visitor. So for example, if you have four visitors and you flip over one finance manager worker chip, you would earn $4,000. Now, let's take a look at contracts. You want to complete your contracts in order to earn points. You need your rooms to match the layout shown on the contract. There also needs to be objects in each of the rooms to complete the contract. This symbol on a contract means any color room can satisfy that part of the layout, but there still needs to be an object in that room. So in this example, the contract has been completed successfully. Remember to keep your contract cards a secret. Rooms can be used more than once to complete more than one contract. You will earn points at the end of the game.
Once a player takes the last wing from the spiral, the game is over. That player chooses one of the objects from the endgame disc to store in their museum. Then, the endgame disc is flipped over to signal the end of the game. Players can't take wings from then on, but the carpenter action can still be taken. You will earn $1,000 for taking that action instead. Players who haven't taken a turn yet this round can do so now. Then there are two more turns around the table, and after that, the game is over. Points are totaled, and for each $4,000 you have, you earn one point. Then, points on completed contracts are added to your score. For each wing filled with objects, if the wing has a point value, you earn that now. Every object placed in a wing earns you one point. Whoever has the most points wins the game. If there's a tie, the tied player with the most money wins. Well, that's it for explaining curators. Thanks again, patrons and world shapers. If you've enjoyed watching, subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Dibs on Blue Games. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will gladly respond. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.